Hello everyone, thanks for coming back. This is Graybeard, my name's Ron. Got a quick dirty little video for you today. What we got here is my 22 Tri-Glide GI Edition. It is now time for its 5,000 mile service. So basically it's just an oil change and looking everything over. Make sure things are tight is a good idea, especially with the new bike, just at random go through, make sure all your fasteners are tight. If you're looking for any leaks, anything of that nature, there's nothing real major with the 5,000 mile service other than just the oil change and looking everything over. No adjustments to be made, no other fluids need to be changed. Just refer to your owner's manual or you can even go on Harley's website and download the schedule <clears throat> for the maintenance for its miles. I've had this bike now Oh, about a week and a half away from two months, and I've already gotten 5,000 miles on it. Been really pleased. I've had no issues except for the first week out. We had a few glitches with the radio, and that was fixed with a uh, software flash. So other than that, we've had no issues. Uh, our GPS is getting a little lost on us here and there, sending us to places that we shouldn't have gone. Uh, so as you can see, the only thing I've done to this one is that I've Changed out the stock bars for some LA Choppers 14 inch Batwing 8s. You can check the previous video for that. And also the seat. This is the uh, Mustang Custom Deluxe. I actually did a video on this one, putting it onto my Ultra, which is over there. Uh, luckily, they're interchangeable. Uh, for long trips, we're going to use the Tri Glide. So I switched it over here for a trip uh, that I've got some videos coming up soon on that. So without further ado, let's show you what we got going on over here. Once again, we're using Amsoil. Amsoil has the V-Twin oil change kit. And I got a couple extra quarts. Uh, it's not a bad idea to have a couple around. And plus, with Harley's uh, new maintenance schedules, you can use synthetic 2050 in both your transmission and your primary. So if I want to do that, I would do that also. Show you the cost of this project. Now I do have the membership with Amsoil, so it gives you some savings. And you can see right here, let's see this thing will focus out. Uh, I had a saving of $28.25. I believe it's right at $50 a year for the um, membership program. So you can get savings like this off of every order, plus free shipping if it, uh, your order is over $100. So here we have the V-Twin motorcycle kit. It cost me $81.15, two additional quarts, $25.78. Of course, they got a environmental fee of $0.07, cent, subtotal $107, sales tax of $8.82, with a grand total of $115.82. So that is including my discount of being a member with Amsoil of $28.25. So to give you an idea as to uh, what this is going to cost. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to get this box opened up and I'll show you what comes in the kit. And when you order this kit, you have a choice of a black or chrome oil filter. And we're going to get an additional five quarts. V twin motorcycle oil, the 2050 full synthetic. Then also, you're going to get the Amsoil oil filter. There's part number on that one. 
And if you look inside the oil filter, which was kind of a shock to me when I first seen it, you get a brand new oil drain plug O-ring. And I went with the chrome oil filter. I'm just a sucker for chrome. You take a look inside, you can see the check valve down in there. It's a really high quality filter. 20 microns versus most others at 40 or 30 microns, so we got 99% efficiency. It's, so far, I've had really good luck with these filters. So, what I'm going to do now is going to go ahead and get this oil drained out and get this filter changed out, and we'll get her filled back up. All right, folks, what we got here underneath the tri glide. You have two different plugs here. This plug here is for your transmission, and this one's for your engine oil. And then if you're going to do your primary, look over here, there's your primary drain. So what we're going to be doing now, be pulling this plug out, getting it drained, replace the O-ring on it, and get it torqued back down to proper specs. There's not a whole lot to see here, because it's rather cramped. As it is, I had to pull the track up onto a 2x4 so I got room to get my uh, drain pan up underneath there so I'll be right back with you okay just want to show you here this is the oil after 5,000 miles it's rather clean when uh, Jackson Mississippi Harley Davidson did my 1,000 mile service they just used standard oil but I'm going to full synthetic now so we got that draining down here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to crack open the uh, oil fill here, get a little bit more air in the crankcase so that we can uh, get that drained out better. I'm going to just go ahead and take this out and set it aside. Give us plenty of time to drain. All right, I'll be back with you as soon as we get this uh, drain plug back in and get ready to refill it. Alright folks, we went ahead and got the oil filter changed out, I drain plugged back in with the new O-ring, everything torqued down the specs, we will put the oil in. One thing to be cautious of, it appears the last dealership that did my thousand mile service, I think they used an impact wrench with Hulk or Thor or somebody using it because I had a hell of a time getting that oil filter off. So be cautious when you do that. I, mean, I don't understand why these techs or mechanics, whatever you want to call them nowadays, they do that. You know, just run the oil filter down until it stops spinning loosely and then go about another quarter to half turn. That's all it takes. Because the compression of that gasket will hold the filter in place. And be sure to put just a little bit of oil on that O-ring before you put it on. And make sure the old O-ring comes off with the filter. I don't know how many cars, mainly cars, I've seen People go to like Jiffy Lubes or things like that, you know, those little fly-by-night little oil chain services. And they take off going, going down the road and lose all their engine oil because the filter's been double gasketed. So that's one thing to really be aware of. You know, sometimes you get in a hurry and you might not catch that the old seals on there. Said, you know, I've had this bike now for a week shy of two months. And we just really enjoyed it. You know, so we've got 5,000 miles on it now. Uh, we drove up to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia, and came back. And then this past weekend, we went up through northern Texas, Oklahoma, and Ozark, uh, Arkansas, up in the Ozarks, and did the Harley 365 rides up there. It's been really fun. I have no complaints whatsoever, except you know, our first trip from Louisiana up to Georgia I did with the stock bars, and that did not work out well. As soon as I got home, I was like, nope, we're changing the bars out. So that's so how I went and put the LA chopper bars on. And I 
tell you, is a dramatic improvement, especially if you're a taller person like myself with long arms. Definitely get the bars up higher. Your, your shoulders and your back will love you for it. I think overall changing the bars out is pretty much the biggest bang for your buck uh, in regards to money spent versus return. I mean, bars and the seat. You know, this uh, Mustang seat was a big investment, but I tell you, we love it. The best part, I could switch it between both my bikes. So on this 5,000 mile service, like I said, as you go through, it's a good idea to just check every single fastener that you can get a tool on to, make sure they're snug, you know, some things may work loose, you know, your exhaust bolts, your clamps, just literally any fastener you can get a hold of, make sure it's tight. Uh, you know, a brand new bike, it was two months old, well technically three months old. It was, uh, came off the assembly line August 3rd, so it's just a little over two months old since it was born and things can rattle loose. I've already found one of the emblems on the front fender, one of the clips had worked loose, and one of the nuts that hold the fender to the bracket had worked itself loose. And I checked that probably about 2,000 miles ago, and just doing a general walk around, noticed there was a little bit of rattling while it was idling, and that's when I found that. So like I said, don't be afraid to grab your tools and just go through every single fastener and make sure everything's nice and tight. All right, so there's our four quarts. We'll get this funnel out of here, close this up, and let it run for a little bit, and come back and check my level, make sure it's good. And then I'm gonna come back and inspect my air cleaner, see if it needs to be blown out. I've probably sucked a lot of bugs into it. And I haven't been in there with much dust or anything, so I'm not too worried about that. But if anything, I'll use some light uh, air pressure to blow any dust that might be in there and get it cleaned up and put it back in. And every time you pull this drain plug out, or check plug, check your O-ring, make sure it's good to go, because it would suck to have to have a leak coming out of there. All right, folks, that's pretty much about it. As I said, I'm gonna go back and check the air cleaner on this one, and uh, go through and check all my fasteners again. Uh, like I said, I just found two fasteners on the front fender loose uh, about 2,000 miles ago. It's no big deal, but I just like to go through, especially just being a brand new bike, I'm gonna go through it more often than not and make sure everything's good to go. So thanks for joining me. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel. You know, it's a new channel. All I can do is uh, fight that algorithm till we get noticed to get it out there. And the more subscribers I get, the more exposure I get, and I'll be able to uh, fund more projects. As of right now, all these projects are all being funded by myself and my wife. So thanks for watching. Hope to see you in the next one.